another day on the campaign trail has almost come to an end. I'm here in Mudgee at the moment, but I'll be going home to Dubbo shortly. My day did start off here in Mudgee, where I got to see a water diviner in action. I haven't seen a water diviner before, but there was a resident in Mudgee who is going to sink a bore on their particular property, and so they called a water diviner in to find the best place on their property to sink that bore. Now, I can't tell you the results of that because the bore hasn't been sunk yet, but I'll follow up once that bore has been sunk to tell you how accurate the water diviner was in this particular circumstance. I then met with a gentleman who's going to get me into a couple of the coal mines around Mudgee. And I'm keen to go and talk to some of the coal mines and just look at the operations firsthand. Now there's a lot of different opinions around coal mines as I travel around the Mudgee area in particular. The income from the coal mines is incredibly important to the Mudgee economy, but then some people are worried about climate change and worried about those coal mines and, and what they might be doing to the environment and what the long-term future of the coal mining industry is around this particular area. I want to have all the information, all the facts, if I'm called on to make any decision around coal mining and certainly decisions around climate change. So I'm keen to get out to the coal mines and this gentleman I spoke with this morning is going to arrange that for me. I then jumped in the car and went north. Basically, I have an area north of Mudgee, north of Golgong actually, the far extreme north of the electorate above Golgong. And I haven't got to that area before and I wanted to go along and, and talk to some people there as I do and just see those areas and look at that, those particular areas firsthand. So it seemed to be, as a complete coincidence, the morning or the day for the bees. I went to Bungabar, I went to Birrawar, I went to Barney's Reef, I went to Beryl, also went to Tallawang, and then on to Marothri. So there were six different localities that I wanted to go up there and have a look at and speak to some people around there. And I went along and, and talked to some people there, met some people there, had my father-in-law with me today. He knew some of those people. He dealt with some of those people in, in his past life with either a CRT or a grain trading business that he's had. So it was good to actually hear from those people what's happening around those areas. And some of those people are going okay despite the drought. They've been able to work their land in such a way that they've been able to go okay. Other people obviously are suffering from drought. And certainly people are trying different things. So for example, a cow peas was one particular farmer experiment with cow peas. And, and again, one of the things that a drought will do is make you look at what you're doing and see if there are other ways to do essentially what you've been doing in the past. So there were some different ideas I heard today. One thing that I thought, think was an overriding sentiment from all the people I spoke with today was a frustration and disappointment and disillusionment with the major parties and in particular, the National Party, because you can imagine the areas that I was visiting today were all very long-term country party, as many people told me, long-term country party voters, National Party voters, but they're just a bit disillusioned and they really appreciated me coming along and having a discussion with them and talking to them and, and really taking the time out to just go along and, and travel a lot of kilometres today alone just to go along and talk to some of those people and, and really find out firsthand what's happening for some of those areas. Roads was the other thing that I heard a lot about today and people that are out near Beryl know about the cattle truck that ran off the bridge out near Beryl. Um, that was probably about a month or a bit, bit longer than a month ago and that bridge is still sitting there with not a lot of work being done on it so far but it's a bridge that really shouldn't have allowed a cattle truck to even go off the edge. So again that was one small example but roads, roads and roads. A lot of people I spoke with today, roads was a major issue for them. So hopefully if I can get in there I can direct more funds to this electorate and get some of those roads looked after better and, and people don't expect in some of the areas they're living they're reasonable and sensible and rational they don't expect a four-lane motorway to be servicing their place but having it graded more often than once every two years i think is a reasonable request and something that i think some of those people deserve out there and i think this budget the state budget we can allocate that money to those people again if we've got someone that's really focused on looking after this electorate as well as possible Tomorrow I'm off to Narromine. I've got a meeting booked with the Mayor, GM and a development officer there in Narromine. So I'm going there to meet with Narromine. Plus I've got a few residents around Narromine, around the area that have asked to meet with me. So I'll be spending time in Narromine. If you want to see me, then make sure you let me know and I'll come along and see you around the Narromine area. And then Thursday I'm back around the Mudgee area and then Friday into the Dubbo area. This has been Matthew Dickerson, your independent voice.